Hey guys, welcome back to Pop 'em Up Chem. This is going to be our last video on organic chemistry. We're going to be looking at reaction pathways, kind of bringing everything we've done together. And for the HL, we're going to do a little bit on reduction reactions to twin with our oxidation. Quick question for you to get started on then is about the mechanisms of these two reactions. And I want you to draw both of those mechanisms as well. Pause the video, take your time with that one. Okay, so hopefully you saw that the one chlorobutane is our primary. And so with primary, we're not gonna have the positive inductive effect enough to form our stable intermediate carbocation. So instead we're going to have an SN2 reaction where the nucleophile will attack that electron deficient carbon, forming our intermediate anion where we have the chlorine and hydroxide group partially bonded. And then that will go on to form our primary alcohol product and also leave us Cl minus left over and because we've got Cl minus and it reacted with KOH we're going to have KCl. Now with the 2-chloro 2-methylpropane we have our secondary so because we have our secondary we have you could have picked SM1 or SN2 I'm going to do SM1 here just to show both we're going to have the stable intermediate carbocation and then the hydroxide will attack forming our alcohol product and both reactions are going to form KCl as their byproduct. Okay, I'm gonna start with the SL. If you're HL, you can skip this component, go forward in the video and start looking at reduction before we go over the HL reaction pathways. For SL, we're gonna review all the reactions we've covered and produce a diagram that helps us. So you wanna find this diagram in the files. Now you'll see here we're starting with an alkene and then you're going to look at the reaction conditions and then draw the product. So this first reaction I'll do as an example is polymerization. So we're going to see the double bond be opened and then we're going to draw our square brackets to indicate it's a single repeating unit. So what I want you to do is either get this diagram and print this off or draw it freehand it's up to you but take your time and have a go at doing all of this before you jump ahead to the answers because the more you practice this the better it's going to help you with all of your unit so pause the video and have a go at that great so if we look here, we've got H2 nickel catalyst. So we've got hydrogenation. So here we're just going to break the double bond and form our alkane. Bromine with UV light. Telltale sign we've got free radical substitution. So we insert one bromine. Now you'll see with going upwards from this reaction or right by just adding Br2, we're going to end up with the same molecule because Br2, we would get the electrophilic addition reaction. And if we did Br2 plus UV light again, then we would get another free radical substitution reaction. And from there, we could do a further free radical substitution and substitute in bromine once more and have the tribromoalkane. Now, again, if we follow the reaction from our bottom right molecule up, heat with NaOH, we're going to get nucleophilic substitution reaction to form our primary alcohol. Now, once we've got a primary alcohol, we know we could distill that with some chromate and form our aldehyde, or we could reflux it to form our carboxylic acid. So you want to be able to navigate comfortably three steps using this kind of reaction scheme and practicing this, writing it out, and doing questions is really going to be the only way that you're going to develop an understanding of how we can turn one molecule into another, which is a really useful skill. Similarly, you also need to be able to recall the conditions of reactions as well as the products. So the sheet that is included that you did before also has this sheet, which has all the complete molecules. And again, you can practice with your reaction conditions, re reagents, and catalysts using this sheet. 
So in the way you did before, pause the video and have a go at that. Hopefully you end up with something that looks like this. Even if you have or haven't used the template, sometimes it can be useful to redo this in your kind of own structure and your own way using colors or using different cues that you may want to use, but either way is fine. Now that you've done that, SL students, there are some questions, synthetic roots one, which you'll want to be doing. HL students, you're going to start here. So just a reminder for HL students, of the oxidation of alcohols that we did at the beginning of the unit. We looked at this reaction scheme about the difference between primary, secondary, and tertiary oxidations. So reduction, we're gonna be looking at going in the opposite direction. The key part of that is going to be the reducing agents. So there are two reducing agents we look at at IB. One of them is LiAlH4, and one of them is NaBH4. So we have lithium tetrahydroaluminate and we have sodium tetrahydroborate. These are both extremely reactive reagents. Now the lithium can be used to reduce carboxylic acids, aldehydes and ketones as it is the stronger of the two reducing agents. The sodium can only be used to reduce aldehydes and ketones but both of them are a source of hydride ions. That's H minus ions through this dative bond with the central atom. So how can we draw out these reductions? Well, again, just as with the oxidations, we don't need the mechanisms. So we take any carboxylic acid and four moles of our reducing agent, which we do as hydrogen in the square brackets, a little bit like oxygen in the square brackets, forms our primary alcohol and H2O. Now we're going from the carboxylic acid through the aldehyde to the primary alcohol. However, there's no way for us to stop the reaction in the middle at the aldehyde. So we have to go all the way to the alcohol. We don't have a choice to form the aldehyde using this technique. And we have to use the LiAlH4. However, this reacts violently with both water and alcohol. So looking at the products of this reaction, that can be pretty devastating. So the reaction has to be conducted in diethyl ether solvent, which is a dry solvent, and that stops the reaction from being explosive, although still a rather dangerous reaction. Aldehydes operate in much the similar way, except the only difference being we need half as much of our reducing agent in this case and we're also able to use the sodium tetrahydroborate as we don't need as strong a reducing agent for this reaction, still producing the primary alcohol just as before. Mm -hmm. Lastly, we're going to look at the ketones. Now with the ketones, remember we have two R groups. We're only gonna need two moles of reducing agent to form our secondary alcohol. So if those two R groups, for example, were CH3, for both of them, then we would form the secondary alcohol. And for this one, we would also be able to use the sodium, but we can still use the lithium reducing agent as well. Either is fine here. The last reduction we're going to have a look at is the formation of phenylamine. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to do a reduction reaction on nitrobenzene. You remember nitrobenzene was the product of the nitration of benzene and if we react that with H plus and E minus from HCl and tin in this case to reduce then we end up with a phenyl ammonium ion but in acidic solution we can't get rid of that last proton so what we have to do is we have to wash that product with NaOH to give it hydroxide ions that removes the extra proton from the amine group and we form the NH2 group on the benzene, that's phenylamine. And the important thing to consider here beyond just the reduction and what we're about to do is the kind of series of reactions we can go through. If we think about benzene, with benzene we can react concentrated nitric acid and sulfuric acid to form our nitrobenzene as we did in the electrophilic substitution. Then we can do the reduction above 
by first reacting with HCl and tin, warming it and then washing it with NaOH to form phenylamine. Now this is just an example of a reaction pathway, but these are really important and we're going to develop these for the other reactions we've done. There is a problem with this reaction is and we get a very impure uh, product that's mixed with a lot of tin compounds and the separation is long, difficult and slightly dangerous because we have to do a steam distillation first, then we have to do a solvent extraction and then we have to do a further distillation to be able to get a clean product. So before we look at more reaction pathways, time for a couple of questions. First one, draw the product of propanol with lithium tetrahydroaluminate. Pause the video to give yourself a moment for that. Pop them up. So we're going to do the inverse of our oxidation reaction and we're going to form our primary alcohol from our aldehyde propan 1-ol in this case. Next, why are the reductions carried out in diethyl ether? Pause the video to give yourself a moment. Pop them up. Remember, diethyl ether is a dry solvent because both of our reducing agents react violently with water and alcohols. So we need a drying solvent. Next, why is tin used in the formation of phenylamine? Pause the video to have a go at that. Pop them up. So remember, these are reduction reactions and tin provides the electrons. So now we're going to do what the SL students did previously, but include in all of the HL content, producing a summarizing diagram that looks like this for our reactions. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to start with the alkene, ethene in this case, and then look at all of the reagents and conditions that are given for all of the reactions, and then slowly build up a complete diagram. You can either use this template which I've uploaded or you can draw your own, include colors and all that kind of thing. You're going to take a little bit of time with this so just do that, use your other notes and develop this. It's your own resource and the more you put into it the more you will get out of it. So pause the video and have a go. So let's start going through it. We can see the conditions here for the first reaction are for polymerization. So we're going to include our square brackets. We've got hydrogen nickel catalyst, that's hydrogenation. So we're going to break that double bond. UV light, we've got free radical substitution. So we're going to form one bromine onto that. Now you'll see here, this is the first one where things are joining up. So we could have added Br2 to our first molecule or we could have done another free radical substitution for the bromoethene to form 1,2-dibromoethene. We can take that even further and do another free radical substitution, further substituting with bromine and so on and so forth. We can go down from our bromoethene and add the cyanide group increasing the chain length and then we can form the amine from that cyano group and then we can also form the polyamide if we react that with carboxylic acid as well. Coming back up to bromoethene and reacting it with ammonia then we're going to form our primary amine. Indeed we could further react that with bromoethane and form our secondary amine um, as we looked at the multiple substitutions of the halogenoalkanes with ammonia and why we use extra ammonia in those reactions. Again, we've got the amine, so if we were to react that with a carboxylic acid, we would produce an amide just like we did further down to the left over there. If instead of ammonia we'd reacted with NaOH, we would have got the nucleophilic substitution reaction to form our alcohol. And if we'd reacted that alcohol with our carboxylic acid, then we would form the ester. If instead we'd oxidized the alcohol with chromate and it was just a distillation, we'd form our aldehyde. 
If we reflux that, then we would of course end up with our carboxylic acid. And carboxylic acids reacting with alcohols are of course going to give us more esters. So you can see here we're producing the same molecule multiple times in this scheme and you could branch this out and connect it all together even further. What you can also add in at this point is the reductions that we did in this video. If we use lithium, we can go from the carboxylic acid all the way back. And if we use the sodium, then we can go from the aldehyde to the alcohol. This is something that can take time. And in truth, rephrasing this, redesigning this in your own format might also be helpful. Okay, so now, no practical to accompany this, but plenty of questions. HL students can also be doing the SL questions if they want to get started on the more familiar reactions and then move on to the HL questions as well. There are also questions on reduction too. Thanks again for joining me, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share the channel. And as always, practice makes slightly better.